Namaskar. And I hope you had a wonderful and blissful break and also had a good lunch. Welcome back to our proud program this afternoon. And our presentation for the afternoon will be on Sadvipra leadership by Brother Manish. Manish will talk about what is and who is a Sadvipra. Manish is currently living in Boston and he grew up in Asansol, a small town in India, which is midway between Anandanagar and Kolkata. Manish became a Margi in 1999 when he was a university, university student in Chennai, India. His Acharya is Dada Sanjeevananda Avaduta. Manish himself is an active member of Proudest Universal. He has been very lucky to have visited Anandanagar several times and also Jamalpur twice between 2000 and 2003. During his initial days as a Margi, he was so attracted to Proud due to the new concepts it has that he chose to speak about it in one of his class seminars. Manish also loves Prabhat Sangeet and Baba's spiritual philosophy. Welcome, Manish. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Devika, for the introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. Can every, everyone see my presentation? confirmation from someone yeah, yeah we can we can see it. <clears throat> okay so thank you all uh, for uh, you know being with me on this session uh, today first of all i'd like to uh, give my salutations to mahasadvi prabhava before starting this session this session uh, will be for around 45 minutes uh, followed by a 15 minute uh, q and a uh, i I will be going through a presentation that I have made for this session and will try to, in fact, complete it within 35 minutes because I would like to use the last 10 minutes of my uh, slot uh, to show a 10 minute movie uh, on a new Prout Now platform for uh, Proutist Universal. So recently, Proutist Universal created a new platform under the banner of Prout Now to start a leadership training and study course on Sadvipra leadership. The platform is based in the USA, but it will serve a global purpose. The training has been organized into four levels. Level one is the district level, level two state level, level three country level, and level four is global level. Recently, the first batch of level one uh, training was complete and the Proud Now, Proud Now team created this 10 minute video to share it uh, with all the Margis uh, in the retreat, M more like good news as well, and also to promote the new Sadvipra training platform. So with that introduction, I will get started on the topic today. So uh, this session is about Sadvipra leadership. So in the morning, uh, there were already two sessions, uh, one on the social aspect of uh, Proud, and then you know the second session was on the economic aspect of Proud. Uh, so this session is going to focus on leadership so leadership is such a critical facet in society today. You know, there are millions and billions of people in the world today that depend on the leaders of the society. The leadership of the time also influences all aspects of our lives, you know, be it political, be it economics, be it legislature. So during the session today, we will look at what Baba proposed in terms of the proudest leadership. So it, it is a vast topic, uh, we'll uh, kind of try and do justice, but I've tried to kind of create this presentation uh, 
to touch upon some of the in important aspects of the proudest leadership. So I will first, you know, go through just the reference of the proudest leadership, the Sadvipra leadership in Anand Sutra, followed by a quick overview of, you know, what the leadership has been in, in society till now. The vision of the new paradigm in Trout that Baba has uh, given, and what does the leadership of the new paradigm look like? And then we will also talk a little bit about, you know, evolution of humans and society in general uh, to kind of more support, you know, what Baba has given in terms of the new spiritual leadership of tomorrow. And then we will also take, you know, a look at some attributes of the Sadvipras, more like some important questions around Sadvipra leadership. How do they organize? You know, what is their role in society? So we will look at that as well. So uh, this is a quick, you know, just a reference. Um, this morning, um, Madhusudan ji actually went through, you know, the first eight shlokas which deal with the social aspect of proud. So in the second shloka itself, we see that, uh, you know, the mention of the word sadvipra, more like who will control the social cycle. So in this presentation, we'll make an attempt to see who is a sadvipra and what is a sadvipra. <laughs> So um, before we talk about, you know, Sadvipra leadership, I wanted to kind of briefly talk about, you know, the leadership models that have been proposed till now by the leaders, social thinkers, and economists of the past. Uh, we, we already know about the proletariat leadership that Karl Marx proposed. You know, there's obviously democracy, system of democracy, which is more like, you know, um, Adam Smith or the, you know, capitalist structuring of uh, society. And there is also dictator dictatorial leadership, you know, in terms of individual and party, and then the Sadvipra uh, leadership itself that Baba proposes. I'd like to quickly kind of, you know, uh, you know uh, quote on what Baba himself has said about, you know, the first three leaderships. So Baba says that, you know, those who want to uh, bring about, you know, the, the Shudra revolution with the help of manual labors, uh, will never be successful because he says that shudra minded people do not understand their own problems. They do not even have the courage to dream about, you know, solving their own problems. How can they solve other people's problems? Uh, on democracy, Baba says that, you know, uh, he actually evaluates democracy in the context of dictatorship. He says that though it is, you know, one of the most favorable systems of government right now, which has evolved, However, you know, there is less scope for a strong leadership in democracy than in actually dictatorship. So he mentions that, you know, uh, the countries that have, uh, that have democracies always remain somewhat weak, you know, even though there is uh, the rule of rationality in democracy, uh, then, you know, what one could uh, see uh, more like a whimsical rule in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a dictatorship. However, he says that, you know, uh, democratic stru structures aren't very stable. So they're always in a flux. And then what we are seeing these days as well. On dictatorship, uh, Baba, I, I actually I wanted to mention about dictatorship because, you know, uh, reading about Proud myself and, and learning about Proud, we've always heard a term called, uh, uh, um, what is it? Uh, benevolent dictatorship. So, you know, we, we've always heard that and, and this is in Baba's literature as well. So he has referenced that word, but, you know, in, in the times when we live today, it, it could mean a step back, you know, as to where we are today in terms of, you know, what our, uh, you know, polity is and what our political structures are. But Baba, you know, himself also directly says that, you know, that common people are harassed in many ways by the whimsical rule of a dictator. And in fact, he says in democracy, people are equally harassed by the whimsical decisions of political parties. If the system of individual dictatorship cannot be fully supported, how can we support the system of party dictatorship? So in, in a way, I, I feel he is kind of, you know, not supporting at least, you know, in this context, you know, either individual dictatorship and also party dictatorship, the way it is defined, you know, today and the way we have seen it in the world uh, at, at this point in time. Uh, 
He says, under such circumstances, people want to end dictatorial rule. Sometimes they even seek the help of foreign powers to gain relief from their unbearable situation. And, and he says, this is a grim reality. So at least, you know, we, we kind of see here that, you know, Baba does not seem to support, you know, individual and party dictatorship as well. Yeah. But we will kind of see at a later point in the presentation about, you know, benevolent dictatorship. Yeah. So Baba says that the only solution to individual dictatorship, party dictatorship, and democratic pandemonium is the proudest concept of Sadvipra leadership. So I'm just trying to kind of, in this slide, trying to make a case for a new leadership. So the leadership of the past that we've had so far, you know, uh, hasn't kind of uh, been up to the mark and it hasn't helped the society in many ways. So before we uh, go on to the new leadership of Proud, you know, in this slide, we quickly like to summarize, you know, what is uh, Baba's vision of the new paradigm in Proud. So uh, it's, it's very, very interesting that, you know, uh, that Baba says that, you know, for centuries that there has been no dearth of spiritual and religious leaders. They have been teaching mankind, man, mankind how to realize the truth within themselves. Um, but, you know, he also says that they have instructed their followers to shun the world and its temptations. Very few have discussed in detail the mundane spheres of government, politics, and economics, since development in these realms are, were not deemed important for the spiritual journey of the individual soul. But uh, here, you know, Baba is really unique. He, he was not just a great thinker of the current times. He was, you know, beyond the current times. Uh, he was futuristic. He has constructed a new paradigm in the name of Prout. And, and the most important facet of the Prout is the leadership, which we will see in, in the next slides. So what was Baba's vision of this new leadership that, we, uh, we, uh, that he is proposing? So Baba says that, you know, the society will need a new kind of leader. And he terms it the Sadvipra leader, a true spiritual leader. Um, he says that the responsibility for leading society can only be entrusted to the Sadvipras because they are well established in Yama and Niyama. So going through, uh, you know, a lot of the literature that Baba has written on Prout, you know, he, he kind of mentions this again and again about the importance of Yama and Niyama and how, you know, these new spiritual leadership has to be established in Yama and Niyama, Yama and, Niyama and also, you know, uh, imbibed in with the cosmic ideation. They can alone represent human beings they alone can serve living beings selflessly. So, so his message is very clear. You know, e even in these current times, you know, uh, this could seem, uh, you know, very, a very tough ask, depend, you know, based off of, you know, what we have seen in the past and when, what we are seeing at right now. But he, he is extremely clear. And he says that, you know, since their goal is only the realization of the supreme and not any mundane wealth, power or fame, there is no chance of their corruption. So he is, in fact, envisioning, uh, you know, a, a new kind of humans in society today, which will take over the leadership of the society, and they are extremely spiritual kind of beings. Uh, but you know, here uh, Baba also men mentions, and this is something which I really like about it, is that Sadhviprasa will be engaged in the society, participating in the society. They will provide solutions to the crisis of human society and lead uh, society forward. Sandhvipra is in fact a new class of social psychology. So we've known, you know, from our previous classes that there are, you know, four types of social psychologies right now in the world. But Baba talks about, you know, an entire new psychology, you know, uh, thousands and, and thousands and hundreds of thousands of, you know, Sadhvipras, you know, uh, at, at some point in time in this world, having this new social psychology, which he introduces as the fifth psychology of uh, Prabhu. So, um, so as uh, we've kind of seen, you know, historically, you know, we said that we have seen, you know, very, very, very spiritual people in human uh, society, but they have kind of renunciated society. They have considered society as a distraction to achieving their highest goals in life, which is self-realization and attaining Godhood. But PR Sarkar suggests that instead of the most spiritually evol evolved members of the society renunciating the world, and seeking their own enlightenment, they should take up the leadership of the society. 
So uh, while in present times, you know, you know, this can seem, you know, utopian or impractical to many, you know, in fact, to me as well, you know, at, at some point in time, uh, you know, based off of where we are today, you know, however, you know, and this is where, you know, I will go in my next slide, you know, based on some of the study that I did that, you know, I believe that as part of the human evolution itself, we are already seeing a, a new kind of humans, the contemplative humans, you know, if we can call them, which are already evolving. And, and the science is very much facilitating this process. The new spiritual leadership will emerge out of this, you know, resource pool of contemplative humans who will be physically fit, mentally strong, spiritually elevated, and socially connected and actively participating in the Sadhvipras of tomorrow. So uh, I'd like to kind of, you know, make a case here for, you know, uh, is this so kind of, you know, try and address that question. Is this, you know, utopian? Is this, you know, far-fetched about, you know, the, the entire society being led by people following Yama and Niyama, you know, having, you know, cosmic ideation as their main goal. So if we look at, you know, uh, this slide actually has, you know, two timelines here. So one, the top part is the evolution of humans and then the evolution of society, kind of, you know, moving, uh, you know, parallelly side by side. Uh, so on the top uh, piece here, so evolution of humans, we know that, you know, uh, uh, thousands and thousands of years ago, you know, life was brute, you know, uh, there was no uh, intellect, there was no scientific advancement, you know, uh, human beings were more under the mercy of nature, and then life was completely manual, the survival was what they did. But uh, what has happened, you know, uh, is that, you know, once and then those were the times we can call, you know, human society as a shudra society. But then, you know, families developed, and then, you know, uh, the strong people among the Shudra society regrouped themselves or grouped themselves and then they, uh, you know, called themselves Kshatriyas. They were the ones who used to protect society. But then, you know, a turning point uh, in uh, human uh, civilization was, you know, the invention, the scientific invention of uh, machines and intellect. So there was development of intellect and skills, you know, which caused, you know, human beings to develop more and more machines. So earlier they used to travel by horse, but then it became a horsepower machine. So in fact, you know, human beings move from a manual human beings to a talented human. So during that time, you know, uh, they would just, you know, need to know how to operate a machine, then kind of using their physical power to be able to do things. And, and then came the industrial revolution itself with more and more machines, you know, that, you know, uh, came as part of science. So what happened, uh, you know, as a result of that is that there was, you know, a lot of surplus manual energy that was available, you know, and then with more and more uh, machines coming in and, you know, in today's world, we see that, you know, we have a different kind of machines, you know, technological machines, you know, brain machines, chips, storage, AI, you know, which is in fact causing, creating against, uh, you know, a surplus talent. So from manual humans to talented humans, and now there is like, you know, surplus of manual energy and, you know, talent. So, so as we can see, you know, uh, we, we say that, you know, human beings are kind of the most evolved beings, you know, in this universe, but, uh, you know, within humans itself, we are, we are clearly seeing that, you know, humans are also evolving and, and science is actually facilitating that uh, advancement. So today, you know, what we see is that, you know, we are actually seeing, you know, a different kind of humans, which are the contemplative humans, which has the advantage of, you know, the surplus manual energy and the surplus talent. And then, you know, the main work of nature is to cause the evolution and humans are not expected. They are also uh, evolving. The energy that remains unutilized is used by nature to evolve something new. So basically, I'm trying to create a case here that, you know, uh, very, very naturally kind of, you know, human beings have been evolving to something new. And as we can clearly see, you know, uh, we, we are already kind of moving towards more contemplation and, and spirituality. Uh, so in fact, you know, um, I'm convinced as well, you know, that, you know, what Baba proposes in terms of, you know, leadership, you know, following uh, Yama and Niyama and, and having a cosmic ideation as part of their lives, 
you know, incorruptible human beings, you know, they being the leaders of tomorrow, we can clearly see it, you know, that is going to happen. Uh, so, and, and, you know, very quickly, you know, the second uh, timeline here, you know, uh, this is not the topic of discussion today, but it kind of uh, shows how society has been regrouping itself, you know, from one era to another era, based on the different psychologies that they have. And then also, you know, based on the evolution that they've been having uh, from, you know, one society to another. And right now, human society is at this point, more like at the end of the Vaishan era of the first rotation of the human cycle. And uh, this is where, you know, uh, Baba is saying that, you know, when there are sufficient number of these contemplative humans, you know, already kind of, you know, uh, in, in the path of morality, from within them, there will be those Kshatriya or Vipra minded Shudras who are the pioneers of the revolution, who will, who have to learn to be disciplined, take proper revolutionary training, build their character, be more or less, in, in, in a word, they will have to become what I call Sadhvipras. So the talent pool is coming and those who kind of, you know, train themselves into the different uh, aspects of leadership will uh, one day, you know, become Sadhvipras from this talent pool. And then, you know, um, before I close this, you know, slide, uh, you know, quick point on how will then society keep moving forward. So once, you know, uh, Sadhvipras will evolve and they will create a Shudra revolution, society will move to the next cycle of Kshatriya, but, you know, uh, uh, a new psychology of the Sadhvipras will also be established and then they will facilitate the movement of one era to the next era, ensuring that, you know, there is no scope of uh, exploitation, you know, uh, in any of these eras. So just wanted to, uh, you know, a different view of, you know, what is the place of the Sadvipra in the social cycle, very, very equidistant from the Shudras, from the Kshatriyas, from the Vipras and from the Vaishyas. Uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, Sadvipra, Sadvipra is a combination of all these psychologies, you know, a uh, hub, of uh, the social cycle. So, uh, so next, what I did is that you know, I, I myself had a lot of you know these interesting questions. So, okay, so now we are saying that yes, you know, a new kind of human leadership will evolve. You know, but how can one train oneself oneself to be a sadhguru? You know, what are going to be the traits? I, I also saw a question in today morning session that. You know, how will we know who is a Sadhvipra? How will they be recognized in the society? You know, what is going to be their role in society? How will they organize themselves? How will they be recognized? And, and do Sadhvipras exist in society at this point? So very interesting questions uh, that come to mind. You know, obviously, you know, uh, we all are curious to know about, you know, what this new leadership look like, looks like. So let's you know try to uh, gain you know some insight on on some of these based off of you know some of the uh, research and study that I did you know uh, on uh, you know literature. So how can one train to be a sadhvipra? So as we saw you know the importance of morality in other ideologies and in modern times you know the definition of leadership does not include morality in individual life. Discipline is there, you know, we, we, we do see a lot of people that, who are disciplined. Discipline and morality is not the same. Uh, we also see that, you know, uh, there are, you know, very, very good leaders, you know, uh, in, in society today as well, but sometimes the lack of morality kind of, you know, uh, brings about corruption, you know, uh, in, in sometimes what they do. For a sadhvipra, one factor is indispensable, a prerequisite. So it's more like a prerequisite. It's not like someone is, you know, morally, you know, established that he will become a sadhvipra. But I, I see this more like a prerequisite because, you know, apart from being a moralist and a spiritualist, there is there is a lot more other factors that will need uh, uh, that someone will need training in, and then will need to acquire those skills to be called a sadhvipra. One of the definitions of sadhvipra is, you know, physically fit, mentally strong, 
spir spiritually elevated and socially connected and participating. And uh, just like to quickly mention here that, you know, uh, as I said, Baba in the proud literature has mentioned about Yama and Niyama in the same line, whenever he used the word Sarvipra, again and again, again and again. Um, and in fact, uh, we also see that, you know, uh, 16 points is in fact, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, to me, you know, based off of, you know, what, you know, I've seen kind of matches pretty well with, you know, the definition of, you know, physically fit, mentally strong, spiritually elevated and socially participating. Uh, but I, I also kind of, you know, asked around, you know, a few dadas as to why Baba directly hasn't mentioned, you know, the, the importance of 16 points uh, in, in, for us to become Sadhvipras. And, and the re response I got is that, you know, um, most of the literature that Baba gave on Proud is, you know, uh, prior to even when 16 points were given by Baba. So, you know, it's in the year of 59 and, and early 60s. During that time, you know, 16 points, 16 point wasn't given by him. Uh, and hence, you know, uh, a lot of his literature uses Yama and Niyama, but we can clearly see that, you know, 16 point kind of, you know, aligns with, you know, the definition of physically fit mentally strong, spiritually elevated. So th this itself is a big topic, you know, uh, as to how each of these points kind of, you know, help one to establish or train oneself in Sadhvipras, but we don't have that time today. So, so we will keep moving on. Uh, but just wanted to kind of address this question. How will Sadhvipras organize themselves? So this is also a very, very critical uh, piece. Uh, very, very important, you know, one important of one important one of the most important attributes of sadhvipra leadership is that sadhvipras always work in collectivity they do not work individually society may be lucky to have a good moral leader however you know everyone has you know ups and downs in life and if for some reason you know the leader has a personal crisis the entire structure is impacted by the crisis. Hence, you know, uh, Baba says that leadership should not depend on an individual. There should be a steady flow of leadership is extremely important. Sadhvipras can never be effective when they are one and alone. Leadership can all, should always be collective leadership. There will not be individualized leadership. So, uh, that, so, you know, um, why this point is important is that, you know, uh, we do see in our communities, in our societies, you know, extremely kind of spiritual people, you know, who the community leans on to when they have a problem, when they have a crisis, they kind of go to them, you know, to problem solve, you know, to show the way as to, you know, what they should do. Uh, so, so these people, you know, when they are alone, they, they will be a wise man in the society in the community, you know, but they cannot lead the society. They cannot carry a new paradigm. They, they cannot cause a new paradigm to appear, you know, between eras and eras, between one era to the next era. And that's the reason this collective leadership is so important. So Baba says that, you know, Sadhvipras will create boards from community level to global level in every field of collective living. And, and he has, you know, provided a lot of literature on this as well. So what are the traits of the Sadhvipra? What is their social outlook? So they are extremely uh, you know, spiritual people established in Yama and Yama. But this is, I, I find it so fascinating, you know, uh, the concept of sam, Samaj Tattva, the principle of togetherness. Uh, the principle that, you know, our survival is dependent on each and everything around us, whether it's the plants, animals, lower forms of life, higher forms of life, flora, fauna, mountains, air, water, ground, earth, ecology, the dust in the ground. Sathvipras will have compassion for the entire humanity, living or non-living, similar to how you know, we have compassion for our family members, our cars, our pets. So it, it, it's like I said, a new psychology, a new thinking itself, a new outlook. And that outlook is that that cosmic father is the father and nature is the mother. And because the whole creation 
is created and maintained by nature. So the entire creation is the family. Some, are, some forms are advanced and then some are behind. However, they will also be advanced. They are also evolving. I have read, you know, Baba's literature, you know, sometimes when Baba has said, you know, uh, and, and it had touched me so much that, you know, uh, when you see a firefly, you know, give your namaskar to the firefly. One day, the firefly will become a human being like you are today. One day we were that firefly at, at one point in time. So, but, you know, having this, you know, ingrained in, their, in our minds as a new psychology, this is the new Sadvipra leadership. Baba writes in the future of civilization that a socio-economic theory is of no use, but for this fraternal feeling, the implementation of this theory is an impossibility without sadhana. So as we can see, you know, um, as I talked about evolution and ecological transformation and, and more like also training of the human mind. So what will be the role of the Sadvipras in the uh, social, uh, in the society? You know, I'm, I'm not going to read through all of this, but why this, I, I wanted to uh, put this on the screen is that, you know, uh, Usually I've seen questions and, and there was a question this morning as well that, you know, will Sadvipras fight elections? You know, how, how will they create the change uh, depending on the era that we are in? So I'd just like to, you know, read from here. Uh, see, Baba says that Sadvipras may even have to resort to physical violence because the Sadvipras will have to strike at the source of the power of the class, which is tending to become an expert. For the Kshatriya age, you know, the Sadvipras uh, may have to resort to physical force for the Vipra class, you know, an intellectual revolution. And, uh, and in the case of Vaishyas, you know, the Sadvipras may have to contest elections as well. So I, I just wanted to, you know, highlight this piece, uh, you know, and, and this was very interesting to me. So uh, it, the subject does need to be studied in detail. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, at one point in time, you know, we also know that the hub of the society, but you know, the Sadvipras may have to contest elections as well and, and win elections to bring about a change in the era. And these are the few examples as to what, uh, what are the other uh, ways Sadvipras are going to contribute to society. Uh, Baba has already talked about, you know, uh, human beings being led to a different planet if this earth is not, uh, you know, uh, fe feasible for us to be in this earth. And then the Sadvipras will kind of do that. Sadvipras will never lag behind in uh, making scientific experiments. When the earth will be uninhabitable, they will shift them to another planet. So food shortage is a problem. Only Sadvipras and not politicians and experts can save the world from it. They will produce such tablets which will be substitutes for food crates. So just trying to see, you know, what welfare will Sadvipras bring in the society? How will Sadvipras be identified and recognized? This is also a very, very interesting question. You know, can leadership be imposed from outside? So I, I believe rather it is like self-grown thing, you know, unless one has gone through a process of crisis and suffering, you know, one will never be able to become a leader. One, one may try to impose, you know, uh, oneself as a leader, but society will not recognize them as a leader. In the beginning, yes, may maybe for a short time, but, you know, uh, but over a period of time, they will fall flat. Uh, in the collective leadership as well, you know, um, whenever there is collective life, there are problems, there are issues, there are struggles. Uh, and, and some people kind of, you know, give in to those uh, crises, but there are some people which evolve out of that group who come forward to solve the problems of the society. So the leadership kind of originates problem solving. So these leaders are the Sadhipras who will kind of, you know, come out organically from the society to solve the problems of the society. So this is a very interesting question as well that, uh, you know, uh, we have the term benevolent dictatorship, will it be kind of imposed uh, as a Sadhipra leadership 
Uh, but and, and these are Baba's words. Uh, so people will recognize Sadhvipras by their conduct, dedication to selfless service, dutifulness, and moral integrity. I have like, uh, you know, uh, maybe one more minute because I wanted to show the movie, but this is my last slide as well. And I have actually, uh, you know, given the case of Subhash Chandra Bose, you know, what Sadhvipra could look like. So going by the definition of physically fit, mentally strong and spiritually elevated, let's see if Subhash Chandra Bose, you know, how close was he to be in, in a Sadhvipra? So for physically fit, you know, Subhash Chandra Bose started, you know, the Azad Hind Forge. He fought on the ground as a soldier. For mentally strong, uh, you know, uh, he was qualified for ICS, but he resigned. He withstood torture while he was in jail for prisoners' rights. He was instrumental in destabilizing the British in the Arakan Offensive. Along with M. Dave recruited and formed the INA in February 1942. British with their massive intelligence were completely aware until July 1942. And even after that, they were unaware of the scale and the function. One interesting thing is that the INA, you know, they, they were kind of a small group of soldiers, but they had a tremendous propaganda value. You know, they created uh, a doubt in, in the mind of the British that the soldiers, the Indian soldiers with which they were kind of ruling the country, they will no longer support them. And, and Subhash Chandra Bose, you know, created that doubt in, in the British. Prem Kumar Segal, who was an officer in the INA, he said in an interview that, uh, uh, that initiating a popular revolution with grassroots support within India would ensure that even if Japan lost the war, ultimately, Britain would not be in a position to reassert, reassert its colonial authority. What about spiritually elevated? Subhash Chandra Bose wrote a long letter to his mother about Ramakrishna Paramahansa and Swami Vivekananda. In 1914, he traveled to North India in search of a guru, stated that if Swami Vivekananda was alive, he would be at his feet. His extempore reply to Rabindranath Tagore's address of welcome at Shanti Nigetan on 21st January 1939, Subhash Chandra Bose expressed his deep sense of gratitude to the bard of redressing and deeper issues of the poverty of the inner life. In the same context, Bose highlighted the indispensability of the larger quest for spiritual actualization in life while accomplishing individual goals. He said, we are today no doubt working tirelessly to attain national freedom, but our ideal is greater. We want complete fulfillment in personal and national life. We desire that every man and woman of the country and every nation may in every respect realize truth. In this quest, in this sadhana, political freedom is only a means. So I, I just wanted to give an example, a face of you know, what kind of uh, sadhvipra leadership may look like. So, uh, so there is uh, you know, 15 minutes for Q&A, like I said, but that's, uh, we, we'll have the Q&A in 10 minutes. Uh, like I had mentioned, I'd like to use the last 10 minutes of my slot to show a, a small movie uh, on the new platform that has been created. In the session, I will analyze in short. Thank you. 
Man, is the we can't hear any sound here. So I'm receiving feedback that the audio is not coming clearly. Is that right? Yeah, that's guys. right. That's right. Okay, let me try. Did you optimize it when you shared it? You have to optimize it, the uh, the uh, video. Hmm. Manish, by the way, uh, we're going to do Q&A after my presentation. Okay, okay, Dhruva uh, I'm just, I mean, I, I have not optimized the video, but I, I'm just trying to Optimizing see. is a Zoom function. When you share screen, there's a button on the bottom, just like it shares, it, it sh or it's a share. I see it now, I see it, okay. Let me try that. Did you see it? Much better. Okay, good. Thank you. Well, we don't see it yet. Not yet? Now we do. In the session, I will advise we do a short ideation. Welcome, everybody. This is a new program that we have initiated already in India. And now this platform is based in USA, but it is going to serve a global purpose. It's exciting for me to see this happening and I appreciate everybody investing and becoming a stakeholder in this and, and expressing the mission of our Sri Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar through the service and blessedness uh, activities of Pr Proud, Proud is Universal. Namaskar. Yeah. Uh, I'm very happy to be here also. Uh, I, it is, you know, uh, I learned part in 1974, it's some, some time ago. And from the very beginning, I feel heart is his solution, is more than necessary. It's the first time a spiritual master take a look on the social side. Because there have been so many before, nobody has put such a theory based on spirituality but towards the social side. And it's so important, you know, many, many times, you know, when, you know, other spiritual master, if you ask them, what about the society? They say, oh, it's not your problem. Just go and meditate, you know, think about your own liberation. Don't look for other things. But this was lacking. Hi, Namaskar. Namaskar. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this course. And um, it just seems that our society is, um, at least in the United States and around the world also, is just gotten so out of balance and um, that uh, life is, is uh, has less meaning for a lot of people. The, the, the current system uh, is really kind of dehumanizing for a lot of people because, um, you know, we've outgrown it. The purpose, the aim of this program is to prepare the new generation, train them, for the legacy and the continuity of ideological education, for creating Sadviprahs continually in the future course of humanity. Namaskar. Namaskar. Uh, I'm Rajan Dev and I'm in Winnipeg uh, in Canada. I've uh, been in Winnipeg for the past 10 years, and then before coming to Winnipeg, I was in Zambia and uh, DR Congo in Africa. And then uh, I've been Margi since 1994. Uh, a new worldview, a new, a new paradigm. It seems like we need a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to be part of that. I want to be part of that. I want to learn what I can and be part of this new uh, paradigm that is uh, sprouting up or crowding up, whatever. Very good. Um, <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to this. Hey everyone. Namaskar. Namaskar. I'm Nilima and I am talking from Puerto Rico. And um, I'm very happy uh, for, you know, to, to join you and to be here. Um, um, I'm right now living here in Hong Kong. Namaskar, everyone. I myself have been um, affiliated with Proud since uh, basically in the early 80s. And um, I'm here just to take a refresher course. I am um, I'm a teacher as well and I also see a strong need for proud. I think proud has exactly what people are looking for. Thank you so much Dada for, for doing this. Uh, like I think it's extremely important. I was born uh, right before the first proud convention one day before. <laughs> so obviously I could not attend. I was a bit young. So now it's my <laughs> chance to attend some of You're attending. <laughs> some of it. To, tune up, to calibrate and tune up. And exactly. Okay, welcome. Good, good, good. Thank you, Dada. Good, welcome. Um, I am from India. Um, uh, someone else mentioned that they're a teacher. I'm a teacher too. And um, I thought uh, having such young minds, you know, if I am more aware of what is Baba talking about in Proud, when we have discussions, um, you know, I can sow some seeds, hopefully, which could then later blossom. So uh, I'm very excited to be uh, learning more. I have read the physical book, but uh, as uh, mentioned, uh, I'm, I, I couldn't make out much and it is very yeah. difficult to understand. Yes. Really looking forward to my own and hopefully spreading some of the message to the young minds. Sure. That yeah. My name is Piyush. Yes. Um, I am in Boston area for more than 20 years now. Uh, so I come from technical background and then I did my management here. And as I was attending first class, uh, what teacher were teaching, you know, as, as part of MBA was how to increase shareholder value. I'm not able to digest that until today. <laughs> I'm looking for that, you know, answer. So, so I've been reading a lot of uh, book, proud, but still more my ideas. My it's a little bit scattered. So when I got this opportunity, I said that no, jump on it so that I can have a, a solid background. Because whenever I'm discussing with people, 
my thoughts are a little bit scattered, so I'm less convincing when I try to explain about proud. And uh, I'm sure through this uh, uh, this teaching, I'll have uh, more knowledge, and then I'll be more confident when I'm, I'm I'm talking to people about proud. We all know that as Baba lived, he trained us. He kept training us till the last day he breathed in a physical body. He trained us thoroughly in practices and the theory of Prabhupada. But now, 30 years later, today we notice that there is a gap Proud has not been much discussed in the past 30 years outside India, especially. So naturally a time will come that with the first generation of Margis and Sanyasis leaving Earth physically, maybe there will be a big shortage of the original thoughts, ideas, practices, values that Baba wanted, Sri Piyar Sarkar wanted to create in the society. Thank you, Dada, for giving me that opportunity again. Oh, so, I am in India, I am a doctor. Uh, I am a doctor and uh, mm -hmm. I have been associated with Anand Mark uh, since 1995 and I feel very uh, uh, I think I'm very lucky to have been able to be associated with Anand Mark and Baba I've not seen Baba but uh, uh, I always feel that uh, this has been the best thing in my life I'm looking forward and I've always uh, read about Proud not in detail but I have an idea uh, but I would like to attend this course and see what we can do and contribute. This is, will be a learning experience for me. Thank you. Thank you. That great master has, you know, uh, emphasized so much that, you know, people cannot do meditation unless they have the minimum requirements of life. Thank you. Uh, that was the end of the movie as well. So I hand it back to Sister Devika. Thank you. Namaskar.